Hi, my name is John, and in today's video I wanted to show you a little project I've been working on. A 3D printed screw tank. The idea for this video came from a video I watched recently, which was uploaded by Colin First. You probably know him if you're watching this channel. And he built it in a larger scale than mine. Uh, he could sit in his, I could, probably can't sit in mine for very long. And he used it to drive around a couple of fields and uh, some mud and water. However, he, it was not him that had that idea for that vehicle concept, but instead uh, those vehicles have been around for about 90 to 100 years approximately. And um, they were used or at least tested by various militaries. The US military tested them, the Russian military tested them or Soviet military and probably some other militaries as well. There were also attempts to use them for science purposes and also agricultural purposes like driving around a soft field and stuff like that but they never really caught on. Um, the idea however is quite uh, ingenious. They have two rollers which have like a screw-like thread on them which also gives them their name screw tanks and by rotating the rollers you can basically move forward and rearwards and by combinating the rotations you can turn around the axis and go straight ahead or straight backwards. You could also go sideways uh, in theory at least but uh, that's probably not uh, really intended because you don't have much uh, steering direction to control sideways. So those uh, those vehicles were never really used uh, for quite a lot of reasons, I guess. Uh, you can't really drive it on the road uh, or on a hard surface. It needs to sink in at least somewhat. I guess it could sink in on the road if it's heavy enough, but then the road would be pretty damaged. However, thanks to the large surface area of the roller, they're very good in sand, snow, grass, mud, or like all the soft surfaces a normal vehicle usually gets bogged down in. So. Uh, I'm going to try to run this in snow. We have a bit of snow behind us. Uh, hopefully the project will be finished before the snow is gone. And um, also going to try to run it through grass and mud. Probably not going to try to let it swim uh, because the rollers are not watertight on this design. Probably could epoxy them, but uh, I'm not going to try this initially at least. So um, I suggest we take a look, uh, take a closer look before we're going to uh, test drive it uh, through the field. So you can see the vehicle now from above, uh, it's 3D printed as I said and the size is about 30 by 45, 50 centimeters, something like that and everything is from the 3D printer, obviously besides the motors and the metal screws. Everything else I have been printing in PET-G, which I use because it's quite watertight and water resistant and I like PET-G. Okay, let's take you through the design. Basically we have a frame. And the frame is just uh, in front, it's designed to be as light lightweight as possible. We have two arms holding the rollers. Oh, sorry for the electronics falling out, they're not glued down yet. We have two arms holding the rollers in the front. And we have two housings for the drive mechanisms in the rear. So you can see this drive mechanism here. Uh, the housing is almost complete, just the lid is missing. And the other one, we miss a couple of parts. I'll move that out today. We miss a couple of parts. The rollers itself, um, important for the design is you need two rollers obviously, and or at least two, you could also have four or six or eight, and it's important that they have threads on them that are spinning in opposite directions. So the left hand roller is spinning in this direction and the right hand roller is spinning in the other direction. And this means that if both rollers have the same amount of grip, the vehicle is uh, preferably going forward. If they were spinning in the same direction, you could imagine the vehicle would go sideways. So yeah, that's quite important when designing it. Um, else, there's nothing special about them. Uh, you can see in the middle there's a hole going down there. Uh, you can stick my finger in it, kind of. And initially I designed it to hold a metal rod, a 10 mm metal rod or aluminium bar. However, um, the one I bought in my local hardware shop was a bit too big. It was like 10.2 millimeters and I didn't want to hammer it in before I finished the design. And uh, as I have screws holding it together anyways, it turned out it's so stable, I don't, uh, didn't need the bar in the end. So I left it out. In the front, we have a 10 millimeter bolt that's going through a 10 millimeter inner diameter bearing and then it's screwed basically into the plastic here. And it's, uh, I think, an 80 millimeter long bolt, so it's going back to here approximately. So this, this size about and it's holding on the front perfectly. In the rear, uh, we have a bigger bearing. I have a 50 millimeter inner diameter bearing uh, and that it's holding on 
toroplastic axle or the rear part of the roller that's fitted inside. And there are a couple of reasons for this design choice. Once uh, this allowed me to enclose the power transmission. So as you can see here on the other side where the belt is already in place, um, the drive wheel is inside the housing. I hope you can see that. Uh, so if I put a lid over here, which I will do in the end, uh, there is no water and no snow getting into the drive belt system. And uh, that's why the large diameter was practical. And also, if you look at the motor on the front here, uh, you can see it would probably fit in there. And I have been thinking about a design where the motor is sitting inside the roller with an inner diameter or inside the planetary gear uh, to drive it. But that's for a later design and uh, as this is only a proof of concept, this was more than good enough. Now talking about the motor, let's have a closer look at that. So we have one of the, mo of the two motors that will be installed on this here. The other one will sit right next bit here, uh, but it's in the post still, so uh, waiting for that. And this motor is a Hobbywing Fusion Quick Run uh, 1200 kV. And this one has the electronic speed controller built right into it. So the electronic speed controller sits here in the back. And this uses Hall sensors to measure the rotor angle. Uh, so this is a field oriented control. Uh, it's a bit better than a usual electronic speed controller with an uncontrolled or unregulated motor. As in uh, even at the lowest RPM, which is about 150 revolutions per minute, you can provide the maximum torque it can. Uh, so there's pretty much no need for gearing uh, for torque reasons. However, gearing is still necessary because uh, the minimum RPM is set is about 150 revolutions per minute and uh, the roller here on the outside, uh, they are probably going a bit too fast, at least at the low power setting is 150 revolutions per minute. So I decided on a gearbox and this gearbox up here is 3D printed and currently as it's installed it has two stages but it's modular. You could add another stage or remove one. And each stage uh, has a gear reduction of 6.4 to 1. So every revolution of the input gear, or sorry, every 6.4 revolutions of the input gear result in, result in one revolution of the output gear. However, as we have uh, two stages, we have to multiply those, so we get a total gear reduction of this uh, gearbox of uh, about uh, 40 to 1. So the, rot the motor has to spin 40 times for the output pulley to spin once. And then, looking at the output pulley system, it's a pulley and it goes over an idler wheel here, uh, which has the bolt here on the top. So you can turn on this bolt right and left and adjust the tension by adjusting this distance here. Uh, currently I have tensioned it quite hard. Uh, so if I turn the roller, I can back drive the motor gear, even, even if uh, with the gearbox that has quite high resistance from this side. And then it goes on to the, obviously to the drive pulley, or to the roller pulley, I, I guess I could call it. And the T difference between those two is two to one. Uh, sorry, two to one. So if this gear turns two times, the big one will turn one time. So this means that the total gear reduction from the motor to the drive wheel is 80 to one. So for every 80 motor revolutions, the output wheel will, uh, the output roller will turn one time. And I did some earlier test runs uh, today and it might be a bit too low. So I end up mic removing one of the gearbox stages. I'm not quite sure yet. I will have to experiment with that. But thanks to the modular design, that should be quite easy. Okay, enough talking about that. I will finish this print right away and then we will head out in the snow and do a couple of test runs. Okay, here on the very first, or one of the first test runs, you can see the vehicle is working and it's moving forwards, which is nice. Um, but if you can also see I had the battery in the very front there, uh, just rigged to the very front, because it was a bit too tail heavy with the big gearbox assembly in the back. Also, it's moving a bit too slow, uh, so I think uh, it would be a good idea to remove one of the two stages of the gearbox. But before we do that, we will take a look on how the belt drive works, so let's take a look at that right now. And you can see the belts are propelling the rollers uh, nicely. Uh, the tensioners seem to be working well as well. So that's very good, uh, much better than anticipated. Uh, I thought that would be a big problem driving the rollers with the GT2 timing belts. So that's good, uh, we can use those. Okay, now I removed uh, one of the stages. You can see the two-stage gearbox in the top of the picture is much bigger uh, than the single-stage variant. 
And on the very first test run, we will move quite nicely, much faster now, so that's good. And um, it also worked driving up my driveway, which has just been cleared beforehand, so that's nice. Bit of directional instability with uh, the traction, but that's okay. Uh, but one problem came up, as you can see right here. And yeah, I'm not sure if you could catch that, so we'll rewind and play that once more. And you can see right now, pop, uh, the pulley fell off, so we have to fix that. What happened in this case? Well, the front fell off in this case by all means, but it's very unusual. So after fixing these issues, it was time for another test drive. Okay, after the second test run here, we could see that the vehicle is working quite nicely. Um, but however, there were two problems that I found later on. The first one is that the vehicle is not operating very well in very soft or uh, grainy snow. As you can see in the first powder layer, which is about 10 to 20 centimeters thick, the vehicle will just stick itself in uh, and there is no chance of moving. I think to fix this, uh, I would need to redesign the vehicle's roller form and uh, the shape of the hull. And the second problem is here with the right hand bearing which is rotating and you can see it's moving inside that 3D printed part. It's only a friction fit and uh, that friction fit is apparently not tight enough. Maybe it got loose over time or when heating up. Uh. Anyway, that's probably something I have to change because as you could see at the later point in the test drive, the right hand side of the vehicle's transmission just bound up right here. You can see the right hand motor is no longer spinning and the vehicle got stuck. So yeah, I have to fix that. But once that is fixed, I think uh, in a V2 maybe, uh, the vehicle would work quite nicely. Uh, maybe we can see that in a later video. Anyway, thank you for watching. I uh, hope you liked this video. Leave a comment down below uh, if you are interested in anything like that. Also, let me know if I should upload the 3D CAD files for the rollers or the gearboxes. Uh, probably do that after those are redesigned though. So yeah, thank you for watching. Have a nice day.